Hey everybody, it's Marty from Down the Rabbit Hole Travel, coming at you from my home in Alberta, Canada, where I have been chilling in self-quarantine for the last month. I've been reaching out to my viewers, asking them what they'd like to see from my channel, considering I can't go out right now and make travel vlogs or adventure videos. And one of my viewers asked me to provide my opinion on where the travel industry is headed in the aftermath of COVID-19. After doing a lot of reading and research and forming my own opinions on the subject, I thought I'd share them with you and see whether or not you wonderful people out there agree with me or disagree with me. Let's start a conversation, so stay tuned. Naturally, the travel industry has been hit hard by COVID-19 and understandably so, with people required to stay at home, all non-essential travel canceled, some borders closed, resorts temporarily shut down, and all of the measures in place to flatten the curve and hopefully annihilate the virus, of course the travel industry is going to be suffering. But this won't last forever, or at least I certainly hope so. When global travel does return and lockdowns and bans are finally lifted, how will the coronavirus have affected the industry? Will it ever go back to being the same? After reading article upon article from Forbes to CNN to the New York Times and watching news reports and interviews and special editions on the topic, I have formed my own set of predictions. Let me know which ones you agree with and any that you think I may be way off base with. As well, share your own predictions in the comments section below and in a few months, we can come back to it and see who is a human magic eight ball. When the bans and lockdown impositions begin to lift, my first prediction is that travel will begin as a trickle. People will peek their heads out like gophers coming out of a hole, blinking in the bright sunlight. Local attractions will first notice an uptick in attendance as families and friends again begin meeting at chosen locations and people go on day outings just to get out of the house and have that feeling of going somewhere. As the trickle turns into a stream, longer trips will begin to occur and I believe national parks will become the target. They are more remote with less chance of being crushed in a crowd of people. And also they were popular before the virus hit. I don't think families will be rushing to crowded urban locations just because there will still be that residual fear of body contact and proximity in the wake of COVID-19. Parks and rural or more remote attractions will most likely be the places where people plan their first little vacations. I also think people will probably choose to go to places that are accessible by road trip rather than taking flights. That's my first prediction. Who is going to be going on all these short ventures? My second prediction is that younger people, younger families are going to be the first to brave renewed travel. From reading all those articles, I found that when polled, it was mainly the younger population that was itching to get back to the travel lifestyle. While the virus can be contracted by people in younger generations, and in some cases can have devastating effects, the people that had been polled in these articles generally didn't seem so worried. That's why I believe they'll be the first to resume travel once it's allowed. Also, younger generations don't quite have the same level of financial responsibilities or stresses that older, more established people with children, mortgages, bill payments, and even business responsibilities might have. So it might be easier for them to recover financially after this crisis and have enough money to be even able to afford flights or resorts. Speaking of business, it was generally agreed in all of the articles and interviews that I came across that business travel will eventually resume, but on a much smaller scale than it has experienced in the past. I completely agree with this prediction. Businesses have been forced to come up with clever ways to communicate and do business as usual during this pandemic using technology and will probably stick to some of these methods once COVID-19 becomes a manageable situation. Virtual meetings are much cheaper than physical travel, so many businesses, especially those who are struggling financially at this time, will stick to things like Zoom or Skype or whatever when they can. Many businesses will not be able to afford sending employees on trips at the same frequency as they could before, so this will also contribute to a definite drop in business travel. Now this fourth prediction might be completely off, 
but I think it's what needs to happen in order to recoup the travel industry. Sad to say, but the reality is that some businesses are going to completely go under during this time. Entire airlines? Maybe. Hotels? Some tourism-related attractions or services? Probably. It all depends on how long this pandemic lasts, how much governments can afford to float these businesses, and how well they're managed during this time. At the end of it all, less travel-related enterprises means less options for us travelers. However, those businesses that do manage to stay afloat after the pandemic will not be able to recover their losses by charging us customers lots more. People are gonna be wary of travel. People are gonna be hurting for money and airlines, hotels, resorts, and other tourism establishments are going to have to work with us. High airfare, extra or elevated fees, rigid refund or change policies, all of those are gonna prevent people from diving back into travel. Costs are going to have to be reasonable and affordable in order for travel to resume. And it will take time for companies to gain momentum and rebuild their cash flow. Another reason prices should stay low, I'm not saying they will, but I believe they should, is that right now in the news, companies are receiving lots of government bailouts and care packages. And to turn around and gouge paying customers after receiving their taxpayer money would be PR Harry Carey. Finally, my last prediction is that companies will be releasing new slogans and advertisements in the next several months based on hygiene. Customers will have a new set of concerns when booking for travel, and that will be the cleanliness of the places that they're visiting. For example, cruise ships have been called floating incubators for coronavirus. So they're definitely gonna have to adapt and improve their cleaning policies and processes in order to entice people to book with them. I believe this in particular about the older population who are, at the moment, more susceptible to COVID-19 and those with pre-existing conditions. These people will definitely want to ensure that they won't be booking themselves onto that one boat responsible for a flare-up of the virus. Cruise ships are going to have to A, enhance their cleaning procedures and really up their game when it comes to sterilization, and B, somehow broadcast these changes to potential customers. Airlines will also have to make efforts to clean cabins between flights more thoroughly, which is going to alter, in my opinion, weights between flight times, how many flights can take off per day, and perhaps even costs for flights. Now this will be tricky, considering my aforementioned condition that companies will have to strive to keep costs down in order to invite paying customers to return to travel. Even hotels will have to make improvements in the hygiene world, wiping down more surfaces than normal. This hyper-awareness of cleanliness might only last for a temporary amount of time until COVID-19 seems to be on its way out or a vaccine is created, but it also might create a new set of industry standards that stick around indefinitely. Who knows? So those are my predictions on the future of travel after this pandemic is either eradicated with an effective vaccine or piddles out due to herd immunity. Either way, the travel industry is gonna have to make some changes in order to regain its footing, become as popular as it once was before this pandemic. Let me know in the comments what your predictions are for the return of travel. When do you think we will be traveling again? I didn't even wanna venture into that one. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and share it out on your social media. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back, of course, and thanks so much for being loyal. I appreciate you very, very much. And to anyone who is new, please subscribe. I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube community. Ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos that I post. Just want to show you guys my quarantine filming outfit. Business up top. Netflix and chill at the bottom, baby.